Um, hi, I'm Kate from Design by Katie B. I live in Cheshire in the UK and you are watching Etsy Shop Audits. Let me just say though, your stuff is really good. The product stuff is not the problem. Like your even all of your images, your listings, everything looks good. So that's not a problem. The thing you don't have is products that people are searching for. Yeah. That's what we got to fix. All right, Katie, welcome to Etsy Shop Audits. This is going to be fun. It looks like, well, I'm going to run through all of your stuff here, but it looks like you've started a while ago, but then actively started again. So 10 years is the, uh, the age, the actual age, yeah. but six years is what you've been active on. The name of the shop is designed by Katie B. Um, the niche, uh, women 35 to 55 years old buying meaningful gifts. Um, sticking point consistency. What should I be doing daily? And then total revenue, uh, $1,476.89 in pounds. And then I converted that to us, which is, uh, 1,893.09 yeah. and then yearly, which it doesn't look like I spelled yearly, right? Cause I was in a hurry. I just left off the Y. I mean, why put the Y in there? It's, I mean, you don't have, to have it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> it was $35,000 and, uh, 44,863 total. Is that accurate? Um, the, the, uh, total revenue. Yeah. It's probably slightly more than that. I'm not really selling too much to be honest. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So the income goal on the bottom that we have is like 35,000 is your yearly is what you would like to make. But, um, what, so I, I guess like, what, are, what are like, that's your yearly that you want to hit. Um, and that's I guess, just, sorry, that that's just to like replace probably my income at the moment, Got but it. it would be more Got it. at the moment. Okay. That's sort of the first sort of stepping stone. That makes sense. So we're talking like 45 to $50,000 is what we would want to kind of use as our target. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Let's, um, so wh why don't we start here? Uh, so I guess like take us through right now, like where you're at and what you feel like is your biggest sticking point. Now I know that you said consistency and what should I be doing daily, but what are you doing currently? Uh, and I guess maybe we can kind of work from there. Like, do you feel like you have a, you know, somewhat of like a direction from what you've already done or are you kind of hopping around, like kind of give us a little bit of a backstory there. Um, I've probably been hopping around for like for ages. Um, I mean, I was doing it um, when I started. It was like, oh, I can do that. And, you know, it was just sort of like a little bit of a hobby. Um, and then um, um, and then I was just trying to like sort of like make it work. But as time's gone on, um, when I'm looking at other competitors, um, because mine is all my maps are all like handmade and I do it by hand. It takes a long, long time to do. But, um, and then when I look at competitors, they can literally turn these maps out within a, a 24 hour period and I can't compete with that. And over like the last couple of months, I've kind of realized that if I don't do something about that, um, then it's, I can't compete and I can't like sort of like carry on. Um, but I've just got to a point where I've, I've found a way of like sort of making that possible. Um, so I'm in another stepping stone period, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I mean, stepping stones are good. Uh, you know, they're not always easy, but, um, so up to this point though, and I, and I know in, in your intake there, you said you you're creating gifts, meaningful gifts yeah. for women that are in the 35, 45 ish kind of range. Yeah. How do you feel about like that? Like gifts, like such, such a wide net, right? Yeah. Are, are you finding, is there any, is there anything like, oh, wow, I'm like doing a lot for weddings or, oh my gosh, I'm doing a lot for, you know, baptisms or is there anything that stands out from what you have sold so far? Um, well, what you mean? Sorry. Well, so like right now out of the sales that you've had, yeah. is there anything that is standing out that has sold more than anything um, else? Yeah, there's been a few. So like sort of festival maps seem to be a bit of a hit. Um, and also there's personalized ones as well, which kind of sort of like goes back to what I was just saying previously, that, that people, um, um, like what I'm finding with competitors, that they will just put um, any location custom made um, 
and then they can produce those types of maps. So I've had some people come to me and it'll be like, say, a Singapore map or a Chester map, which is something that I've already done and they'll go, can you personalise that? So I know that's kind of probably the right direction to sort of like go in, but mm. then it's okay because I've got I've already done those. But then if someone says, can you go and do, I don't know, a map of, um, I don't know, like Berlin or something like that, I haven't got that. So then that might take me a week then to produce. Mm. So that's that's like a real sticking point then. Um, but the personalised ones, that's yeah, that seems the direction to sort okay. of like. Win. Okay, so we're gonna look at the shop here in a second. But so what I'm hearing so far, so okay, we went from creating meaningful gifts for women to I'm hearing people that want personalised maps of locations. Yeah. So right away, I'm not. I don't. It's. I'm. I'm thinking. Okay, it could be a woman, but it could be a man. It could be. You know, it could be uh, someone buying something for their mother. It could be something buying something for their father, right? Yeah, I think I've based it on one customer to, <laughs> that's mm, okay. me, and that's probably why that's got because I I know exactly who it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and so I, I think already, just I mean, this little bit of talking, I'm like, okay, I'm already starting to see like there is probably a niche there that is starting to surface. Uh, and if your thing is like right now you're, you're doing personalized maps and they take you a while, then yeah. it would be like, ha my next question to you would be, have you done any research on maps that people are specifically searching for? Uh, yeah. Okay. Quite a few. Yeah. Perfect. So, um, like graduation, um, gifts, um, uh, weddings. And I did have a wedding one recently of my own or where people have met. Mm. Um, uh, God, I can't think of them now, but all oh, um, home warming, housewarming, like sort mm -hmm. of gift or first house, uh, baby ones, um, how, house and graduation seem to be a bit of a thing at the moment. I think that's just like time of year over here, though. Okay, so. okay. Um, Chris, can we pull up her store real quick and we'll go ahead and we'll dive in? Uh, but I'm glad that you said that you are doing research on the maps, uh, mm. because I think. Uh, that's kind of where I'm seeing like, yeah. Okay. So immediately we come in here, um, now designed by Katie, uh, and, and I get it right. Y you are designing them. Right. But that doesn't tell me like what your shop is like. So again, you started 10 years ago, but really six years ago when you started, were you starting with the idea of creating maps or were you just creating, um, you know, anything that would sell? Oh no, it was maps because I was doing them for, my, for myself. Um, yeah. so that it's always been maps, yeah. Okay, picture's becoming very clear for me right now so far. Chris, what's your thoughts so far before we <clears throat> keep going here? Yeah, and I think I think something interesting that is coming out of this, Scott, you immediately focused on the niche and you said, Oh, it's women looking for unique gifts. That is a potential customer, but that's not mm -hmm. necessarily the niche that we're in, exactly. Right? The niche that we're in, if we're looking at something like this. Katie, what is the reason somebody would buy this? You touched on a few of them. It's usually to remember an experience, right? Yeah. This is the GPS coordinates of where we met, or this is where I sit inside of Wembley Stadium. This, you know, like those kinds of things. And so it's much more of an experiential memory than it is about the customer or the, you know, the 25 to 35 or whatever it was, year old woman, right? Because thinking about this, I would buy one of these for my dad. Scott, you would probably buy some of these for different experiences. And so you actually got a lot closer to what your niche is in your tagline, right? Museum quality maps and prints for special yeah. occasions. And if we think about it through that lens, it makes our day to day, which I know is part of your sticking point, a little bit clearer on what we need to do. We don't have to focus on one specific customer for this. We have to focus on what those people would be looking for and we can then create the whole list of things we could potentially want to create so that in those downtimes, you can start to create some of the, the more searched for things so that you have it ready if somebody wants a customized one, mm -hmm. right? And you can create the, the more generic listing. So if we think about it through that lens, I think that'll start to clear a few different things up. Yeah. And, and so that, that's why I was saying like with the name, like if you said, you know, if someone asked you like, Hey, Katie, what do you, what do you do for a living? And let's say that this was your full-time e-commerce. You're like, Oh, I run a business called designed by Katie. It doesn't tell me what you do. Right. No. But if you said, I, you know, have, you know, I don't know, you know, uh, forever, uh, you know, 
remembering where I was or I don't know. I'm just coming up with something like it's like something of like a remembrance of a certain area. Um, and I've seen these maps too. J just another idea. Um, and again, we'll, we'll look at, we'll look at some data and stuff, but you know, I I've even seen this where my, my wife was like, Oh, that would be really cool. Like a, a dog owner goes on a, on a walk with their dog every day and someone takes the map of their area and then draws them with a heart and with a dog and like kind of walking around. So I, I immediately, when you started talking maps and like, where could this go? Like, that's another potential thing is you're now you're entering the pet market. You're also like, you know, a dog that has passed, you might want to remember that. So again, I'm looking, yours is more of like remembering where you were or where yeah. you are, um, special moments, like those things. So that's why with the name to me, it doesn't tell me who you're serving. Like when I saw this, even before I even looked at your store, when you did the intake, I'm like, okay, designed by Katie's probably making t-shirts, right? <laughs> probably making like clip art stuff, you know, designed by Katie. I mean, how <laughs> many people are doing like the whole, like, you know, art, uh, you know, designed by whatever, right? Like now I get it. If you're an artist and you're doing that, like we have art by Flynn, who's here today, she's actually got a studio where she's doing artwork, right? Like that, that makes sense. This here, yes, it's designed by you, but you, the the store needs to to tell who and what you're or what and who you're you're creating stuff for. That that's just my first thing. So I don't know how married you are to the name. Um, no, it was a question I was going to ask you to be honest, and it's been on my mind to change it for like a long time. And I've just sort of thought, just go with it. Sales are more important. Just leave it alone. Don't, true. I'll home in onto some some and it'll take me weeks to sort out. So it's like just yep. park it for a bit. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I. I, I agree with you. I don't think like the name is like going to, if someone's searching for something, they find your listing, they're not going to care necessarily what the name is. But to me, it just makes the brand more yeah. cohesive. Yeah, and then also, yeah, it's like, it's like I always say, like, imagine you have a brick and mortar and yeah. someone walks by and they see, you know, designs by or designed by Katie. And they're like, oh, artwork. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Canvases for something. But if it was like something about like, uh, maps and memories or something like that, then you're like, Whoa, that's kind of cool. Um, this is why I love, I love having the backstage pass members here. Baby got back said map of memories, right. Or memory map, uh, something like that would work really well for this. Again, that could be potentially limiting if you want to include other things beyond maps, yeah. but that's kind of the direction we would want to go because it tells people exactly what it is and scott yep. before we move into the the shop itself what are your thoughts on one the logo i know you're a huge fan of script and mm -hmm. two ai katie to go along with ai chris yeah uh it's, that's a good point um okay the banner i love because it showed like so if i didn't even see your name but i saw that i'm like oh this is interesting it's like maps of probably certain areas um so i like it i like the style i like the decor in the pictures to kind of make it feel like that's your style. I like that. I instantly feel like, and I don't want to say like, but shabby, cheeky kind of, you know, that feel it, it feels like that. I like it. Um, the coloring I like on the logo, the scripting, because, you know, again, it's KB and I can see that, but it's very hard to read, but I mean, I'm not like, that's again, it's not like going to hurt your business, but I probably would make it a little bit more um, understandable of what it is. Okay. Uh, and the the AI version of you, the cartoon version of you, I'd rather have just you. I okay. think you, your face, like right now, take a screenshot of you. We put it in there. To me, that's going to make it feel more like, oh, I, I feel like I, I know her now because I've seen her. This here is like, you know, it's a cartoon kind of in a sense. I so. think the, the other thing with that, is and we haven't released the full version of this yet we'll be doing it here in the next few weeks but one of the things that came out of the buyer survey the 2024 etsy buyer survey this year is that most people don't care about whether you're using ai to design things or not but when they care they care a lot yeah. and the people who seem to care the most are the most frequent buyers on etsy mm -hmm. either they don't care at all or they really really care and yeah. seeing something like even an avatar that could be perceived as AI can be a huge turnoff for those people. And yeah. so the more human we can be, the better off we're going to be yeah. you know, with those okay. top level Etsy customers. Okay. Yeah. But I, I mean, it, it, it looks good. I mean, like I said, your coloring and style and all that stuff is good. All right, Chris, let's get into, um, let's get into some, some listings here. Um, 
Okay. So the, at the immediately I'm looking at this stuff again, it looks, it looks good, right? Like it, if I'm scrolling and I was interested in getting something like map of, of Wilmington or Wimbledon, um, Newcastle United football, um, Liverpool fo football stadium. Like, yeah. So if someone was looking for this, that's the question though. Are people like, I, I know someone reached out to you and they're like, Hey, could you do a, you know, a map on Liverpool, uh, you know, football. And you're like, sure. And you do it, but no one else is really searching for that. Maybe like two people a month. So that's why when we've talked about this and I'm sure you've seen this on other audits, yeah. what are your three to five products that are going to bring people in the door? Um, that Ke the Kendall calling one seems to be, um, that there's not much out there or not, um, there's not many listings that I see. So that's probably quite high up if anyone's searching for it, but I don't think it's got a huge, uh, search volume. That's, that's the thing I'm looking for. So yeah. that's what I mean by like, okay, so yes, this might be ranking, but it's ranking for something that no one's searching for. Yeah. Right. That's the difference. So that's my question. Do you have a few products that are your products that you know are being searched for? Hey, real quick, I wanted to give you a little behind the scenes on how these Etsy shop audits even happen. Every single month, Chris Schaefer and I, we meet and we batch record three to four of these episodes. Then they get edited and they get posted like the one you're watching right now. But what we decided to do is create what we call our Backstage Pass Club. This is where all of our club members, they get to join us on that recording as we're doing it live. The other cool thing is you're able to ask questions and you also can get access to the recordings before they ever air immediately, raw and unedited. You even get all the questions that were asked that you might have missed because, well, maybe you couldn't attend that one live. So if you'd like to be part of our Backstage Pass Club and join our next batch recording session, head on over to brandcreators.com forward slash club or click the link in the description. Now let's get back to the audit. Um, the Newcastle football one from what I, when I was like doing my own research, that seemed to be uh, a little bit of a, uh, seemed to be searched for a little bit more. Okay, Chris, um, can, can we start playing here? Let's let's start playing in the sandbox and let's start uh, yeah. let's start looking up because I think that's the the critical piece right here right now. I think we've already established like maps are your thing. That's your jam, right? Yeah. Uh, I would change the name personally um, to reflect what you're doing, whether you want maps in there or not. But I think something memories um, would would fit well. I think maps. I think you could do very well with maps, and I think this could do well outside of Etsy. And that's always another thing yeah. I'm looking at. Like you could totally crush this thing outside of Etsy. It's a whole nother animal, but mm -hmm. you could take this whole concept. If you ran a Facebook ad, uh, especially around the holidays for a gift of like different locations where people could get one of these made for a loved one would crush. Um, I think the, the easy, the easy sell there and you, which, which football stadium did you say? Um, at Newcastle, the Newcastle, Newcastle. One? Okay. so yeah. with something like a Facebook ad, right? If we have the Shopify site, we can target just Newcastle fans yeah. on Facebook and be yeah. like, Hey, do you want this really cool thing? That's all about Newcastle. Right. And then you look at the U S you target everybody who went to X, Y, Z university, yeah. right? Cause university sports here is a huge thing. Um, and so it gives us the opportunity to really micro target specifically to those people. And we can do that same thing inside of Etsy just by thinking about who the more popular teams are, who uh, who would be searched. And I think something like the it was Kendall Calling, right? If we just get a list of all of the music festivals mm -hmm. or all of the, the big street fairs, like whatever the big popular street fairs are, we can start to build a list of which ones are the most popular by attendees, even if yeah. we don't have the search volume behind it. So something like the Electric Daisy Carnival, right? Or any of those like larger music festivals. I think you had some uh, some British music festivals on there. I believe that I saw what Glastonbury. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some of those kinds of things, right? And we can create that list. Even if the search volume on Etsy doesn't necessarily tell us that it's the world's hottest product, we know that if anybody's going to XYZ Music Festival that they probably mm -hmm. want to remember it, it lets us get there. Even if the search volume doesn't necessarily play out that way, it at least gives us an order of operations of what we should be creating when we yeah. have downtime. I know you have so much free time to just go create products, but it <laughs> gives you that that kind of list to hit through. And Chris, like, yeah, like, I mean, let me just say though, um, Katie, 
like your stuff is really good, right? Like, so the product stuff is not the problem. Like your even all of your images, your listings, everything looks good. So that's not a problem. Like, you know, sometimes we're, we're going to look at it and go, oh, the artwork, not that good. Like this, that your stuff is good. Right. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, we call it as it is like, it's good. So that part's done. Like, that's not a problem. You've got that hands down. The thing you don't have is products that people are searching for. Yeah. That's what we got to fix. And if you do that, oh my gosh, like you're going to, you're going to get to where you want to go. And then some like without a doubt, um, pictures are great. Your artwork is great. Um, so Chris, let's go ahead and do that. Like, can we just, you know, play and see like, okay, is there anything that we can see that she, that something that's selling 300 a month or 200 a month of something? Um, cause I think that's, that's, if we can figure that part out or at least give you some direction on that, uh, I think that's going to help you tremendously to get people yeah, in, in the, in the shop. Let's do that. And I think the other thing we need to keep in mind here, Scott, before I start typing, uh, while I'm talking, which is ne never a good idea. There's also the potential Katie, if you're interested in doing it, in adding some print on demand things here. And I know Scott, some of the things you and I have seen in the past are mm -hmm. like the metal sign version of the map or yep. map on pillow. And if mm -hmm. you already have the design done, then yeah. you can start to create some of those other kinds yeah. of yeah. things. And so the design, the, the fact that you can do this is killer. And then if we can find even other products that we can yeah. apply it to, that'll just blow that up for you. So Scott, what do you want to look at? Um, just well, I I, I want to see like, okay, so Newcastle. So I guess you were going after Newcastle United football. So if you just put in Newcastle and then it's United, like poster, Newcastle United poster, go to that down there. And let's just see. I, I'm just curious what, what we have here. And then just immediately don't look at all that other stuff. Just run the search, like run the, run the numbers. And I, I just, I, I, this is where I start that this is kind of how I operate. Like, I don't care about like, well, there's look at all these cool products people are creating. I want to know like sales. Hey, I wanted to cut in here real quick. If you're wondering what tool we're using to gather all of this information and to really make these important decisions on products, well, the tool is called Everbee. It's the only tool that we personally use for everything Etsy. They have everything from product research, keyword research, and they also offer email marketing. Now, that tool you can get access to absolutely free when you visit brandcreators.com forward slash everbe and you'll get 10 free searches for the month. You can try it out before you invest in this tool. My recommendation is every single Etsy seller should be using this tool. So if you want to try it, go to brandcreators.com forward slash everbe and you can go ahead and get access to it immediately. All right, let's get back to the audit. So, okay. So we have, um, let's see. So that what is that? Is that a, uh, they have a, a pint, pint glass. glass. Yeah. You're going to run a filter maybe Chris. You have and then to where's Waldo map. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, run a filter. A yeah. Just say, just say that we want it to be a poster. Yeah. And let's see what we got. And then that way there at least. Okay. So there we go. So what's that one there? Travel studio, something, another, yeah, that one there. This one? Monthly sales zero. <laughs> right. So once again, if I'm coming in here and I'm like, okay, I'm going to create this because I think people, I mean, it's a popular stadium, um, but are people searching for it? Now, if they come into your shop, could they potentially say, oh, that's cool for sure. But we got to get them in the shop with a search that's, that's happening right now. And I'm cool. not quite sure that this is from what I'm seeing right now. Um, so, I, so I, the homework would be like right now is I'd be looking at, okay, what are the most popular? I'd start with like, what are the most popular stadiums? And then from there I would say, okay, now let's do a search and see how many of those are being searched for as whether it's maps, canvases, um, you know, something else that's, that's being represented of that. But at least I would want to start with like, what's the most popular one? Because yeah. if we went, if, if we start, oh, so Chris, you went right to studio or stadium map. Okay, cool. So what are we, what are we seeing here? So the, the thing, the interesting thing that I'm seeing here is at least with stadiums, people, and again, this is going to skew a little us, <laughs> right? Um, but looking at this, 
it is a thing, but what people are looking for is a way to remember it. Scott, you remember those like 50 state maps when they were yeah. rolling out all the different state quarters and you put the quarter for each state yeah. in the thing? That seems to be the thing that is really selling if we're looking at the keyword stadium map. It doesn't mean that we're not going to find another one, but yeah. at least in the US, that appears to be what is really dominating uh, the search results in terms of what is selling. Okay. Uh, but if we go with poster, right? Let's, Let's see. see here. And so if we just go with stadium poster, what we're getting is a poster of the stadium itself. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have to go even one more level up here. And put in that, yeah, map poster. Yeah, there you go. And see. And then we start to get some things. So let's yep. see if there's some sales volume there. See, when I've done it as well, I've looked at competitors and gone that way around and like sort of, I don't, see, I'm not on um, Everbay, but I'm on E-Rank. Okay. Um, and gone in like that way around and then had a little look at like sort of what they're selling and what's done well for them mm -hmm. and like gone down that route um, as well. Okay. I don't know if uh, I can do things, but. Go ahead, Scott. No, I was just going to say, uh, you know, maybe we can look at some of those ones that you were using as your, you know, intelligence to see like, because, you know, I, I am a fan of like finding a, you know, a shop that's doing similar things and then seeing something else that you might not have even thought of yet. Like, I think that is, that is important and powerful to be able to do that. Um, but let's see here, large world map push. Um, all right. I like, I like this a little bit better. And this, this takes us out of that stadium mindset. Yes. We've sold some of the stadium stuff. Yep. Um, but if we're looking specifically at what it is that you do, Katie, mm -hmm. it's just yeah. maps. So if we go even just to map posters, then we can start to really dig in and take a look at some of these that have monthly. Uh, well, Chris, look at the top one there that you were just on, like set of three, like click on that. I'm curious. That's 256 sales a month. Right. And you know, that one there, set of three maps, city map prints, custom map print, custom, any location, personalized map print, city poster, wall print. So look at this 3,000 sales in 11 months. In 11 months, this to me is a sign that, yeah, there is, there is definitely demand here for this. Yeah. Um, now are people searching for set of three? No, they're searching for city map, custom map. Um, they have custom in here a lot. I don't know if you have custom in yours or if it's just personal personalized. No, because I think because um like what I was saying before was because my I've hand drawn like all of mine mm -hmm. and then I got to a point where I thought it's not sustainable for me to like sort of carry on. I might as well just quit basically because I can't compete with the likes of the likes of this. But I've I have done like me own like little little research into it and I think I've sort of cracked the code and I think I've managed to sort of do it so that I, I won't be hand drawing them as such, but I can still do something that will I can mess around with it to put my style on it. Yeah. As like the same as me others. It's just that I can turn them out like a little bit faster. Um, yeah. And then I can offer um, a custom map print then, uh, which is good. But it's been, it, it's taken ages just to get to that point. <laughs> so, yeah. No, but, no, but I mean, here we are, you know, and it's like this here to me is like, oh, okay. Now I see, right? Like this, this gives me hope. And I'm like, okay. If we focus our time with just thinking along the lines of this, mm -hmm. right? This here is, I mean, you've had 77 sales, I think, right? Yeah. Like this has got 3,000 in 11 months. Yeah. I think we should focus somewhere in here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 20 plus views in the last 24 hours. They're running a sale. Um, you know, now I, again, like, I'd have to look and see, or we'd have to look in here and Chris and see select options. So if you select in there, I'm just curious, like, what are the options? Is it different places that you can choose from? Um, but again, once you create one, now you have it, it's a template in Canva or whatever you're using. And now you're just kind of like using that as your thing. So yeah, here, here you go. Choose, you know? And again, the, these aren't like hand drawn, but they are, they're put on their own flair um, of, in their own style. And then very similar to how you've done the location on the bottom of yours. So very similar to what you've already done. Yeah. I know you could do this. Mm -hmm. Um, so to me, this is like, this is gold for you. Like, this is yeah. like, this is where I would be spending my time. 
yeah these are the these are the ones that i mean i've seen these like loads and that and uh the like i mean recognize like the name and all that and the, the people that i look at and i think i can't do it <laughs> i don't know i'm gonna do it mm. but i do think I've, I've got to a place where i can do it now um, and it's only been like over the last like week or two weeks Awesome. So I'm quite excited, really, because I think although I haven't got anything live that I can do that, it's I will be heading in that direction. For sure. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Chris, can you um, can you go ahead and see? I, I'm just curious on the tags on this. What, what are they what are they showing for tags? So yeah. just we can see like what kind of search, you know, what are they looking? What are they trying to capitalize on search? Uh, gift for couples housewarming very it's very similar to what you had already told us right like housewarming yeah. stuff um custom map print personalized map um city street map city map home yeah and i think to your point um having variations of like for a housewarming gift it would be like their new city and maybe even you know, this would be personalized is you would have to find their their street their location and you would create like their house or you'd put like a little yeah. icon there and then yeah. that wouldn't be hard to do right you're just plopping yeah. it in there and and doing it so it's yeah. just personalizing it so i think this i mean honestly like just us talking for this you know half hour so far it's like i see the direction you should be headed it, does this is this kind of where you're already headed yeah it was what it's what um i couldn't seem to conquer i just got i couldn't because i because i thought i couldn't compete with the with how these people are like because it, these can get um people can make these i don't know if they're doing them all the same way mm -hmm. um but they're saying it's like some of them can say we'll give you a proof in like three hours and i'm like wow that's mm -hmm. that's ridiculous to me that's so so fast mm -hmm. um i mean i don't know what the the print quality is like um yeah. but i like the print quality has got to be bang on for me um mm. so and there is certain like there's software out there like mapping software that not all of it gives you that that very um sharp sharp lines when like you you're printing them sure. I, I don't know what they're like but it's what anyway it's, it has taken me like a long time to get where i need to be but i, I i'm i'm there so yeah it is it's a direction but it's only something that's happened like really recently and everything yeah i mean from what i'm seeing like right here like you've got all of the workings to do it. Like you've got all the skills to create the artwork. You've got all the skills to create your listings. Cause you've already done that mm -hmm. to me. It's now just tweaking, tweaking the name, yeah. uh, tweaking what you're focusing on. I think all the stuff that's in there is still all good. So you don't have to like change anything in your shop because it's pretty much related to maps. It's just yeah. maps that aren't being searched for all that much. But if someone comes in there, they might, um, Chris is going through this shop right now and just kind of exploring and seeing. So this one here is for a teacher gift, high school. I, you teacher. know what? I'm just making one like that at the moment as well, just for for my little one. Okay. <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, and I think anything for like teacher appreciation, there's going to be like you know, Tell me, yeah. uh, teacher appreciation day, but there's also going to be like the end of the year. You know, yeah. um, there's going to be all that, or someone's retiring. Um, yeah. so there's a lot of open space there for that too. Mrs. Parker, class of 2023. They got the heart on the location. Like, yeah. So I would look for three to five products that are getting this kind of demand. Yeah. And that's what I'd focus on. I wouldn't focus on anything else other than that right now. Your shop is fine as far as it like having everything that you've already created. It's fine. Um, but I would find these products to lead the right people in. So we're getting the search traffic. And then from there, we're focusing all our energy, you know, on those new products because those are the products that are going to drive the traffic. Would you? Um, I know I, I do Etsy ads really on and off, and then if I don't, if I don't see any sort of traction from it, then I just, I just stop it completely because I can't afford to like sort of keep on paying like money into it. Um, would you? Oh God, what's going to say to you now? Um, oh yeah, that was it for the like price wise. Would you just do at a break even? Or yeah. would you? Yeah. Yeah. So in, in the very yeah. beginning, and again, this is a lot of times, and you've probably already heard us say this, but I'll just repeat it for people that have not heard this. Uh, you know, our philosophy is on in any business, you, you're going to have to sacrifice profits in the beginning of any business. If we start a coffee shop, we're going to invest money in that coffee shop and we're not going to see a profit for a little bit right? We're just not, we got bills to pay. Um, we have to pay for advertising. We have to pay for, you know, goods and help and all that stuff. 
So in the beginning, I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously we don't have to wait that long, but in the beginning, if we want to get a product to rank, so Chris, if you can go back to that product real quick and we can look at the, the estimated sales for the month. And th this is how, I mean, th this right here, a lot of people don't understand with the Etsy algorithm or any algorithm for that matter. We all know that, um, not this one, Chris, just go back to, um, the one that was selling like 260 a month they sold. Yeah. That one there. So, uh, in 11 months and this shop, how old is this shop, Chris? Does it say right there? Or is it on the next page? Um, uh, go to where it says shop details, uh, right up there. Here you go. Uh, it is so just under four years. Okay. So it's about four years old, but they only started really selling good in the last like year, right? Cause this one here has 3000 sales. I think the shop has like 6,000 sales. Um, so most of their sales came from the last 11 months because they found these products that this is, this is where the energy goes. So what I'm saying is, is like, so for this right here, they're selling 256 per month. So that's what less than 10 a day. Let's just, let's just say it's eight a day. Okay. So if it's eight a day in order for us to rank for these, you know, this to compete with them, we have to sell about eight a day. Like you think about it, right? If Etsy is looking at sales velocity and they're looking at conversion, this one here is converting at 1%. If you get yours to convert at 1.5 or 2% and you have the similar amount of sales, they're yeah. going to drive traffic to your listing. So in the very beginning, it's not about like, oh, how much money can I make on each sale? It's how many sales can I get to prove to Etsy that my product is selling and the conversion rate is higher. And the way that you do that is yes, you, and this is what we say, doesn't mean you have to do it, is we reduce the price, drive Etsy ads to it. If we have an email list, we drive traffic to it and we discount it. And then that spikes the algorithm, the spikes the sales, which in, is indirectly you know, being recognized by the algorithm and then you move up in the rankings and now you're being shown in Etsy ads. So another placement there, but then you're also being shown in the organic side. So that's the mindset that why we say like in the very beginning, if you can just even sell it for a little bit over cost, mm -hmm. you're doing it to plant seeds, to get that momentum later. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect okay. Sense. okay. Yeah. Chris, would you want to add the, to that? The other thing I'd look at doing, if you're not doing it or considering it already. And Scott, I think this listing was a perfect example of it. You mentioned that they have options. The two options that they have are physical prints or digital. The $23, or I think it was a $19.95 sales price, that's a digital. So you don't have any cost of goods and they're still selling it at $20, yeah. right? And so if we can get them a digital version or get them the, I think it was $49, mm -hmm. right? Printed version, there's a lot of margin there for us. And we can sell the digital ones all day long. Once we've created it, we have it. We're going to start to know, okay, people want New York, uh, Boston, London. I think this one had Liverpool in it, right? Or Perth, mm -hmm. right? Like there's going to be a handful of these that we're going to sell over and over again. And then if they want to personalize it, we already have the larger city map created yeah. that we have for this. And we can go and we can go, oh, where's my Baltimore map? And you go into Baltimore and you go, where's High Street? Okay, cool. <laughs> right? It's the, the intersection of this and this. You put the little heart there and you're done. And it makes your life a lot easier. And that's how you get to having three-hour turnaround on proofs. Right? Yeah. We have a handful of these that are the more popular ones. And then when we go to personalize them, it takes us a couple of minutes to yeah. be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. We're, we're, we're getting some really good feedback in the uh, backstage pass club comments and um, baby goth back says journals. So they have the map on the cover yeah. and they can write about the memory trip travel. Yeah. I thought really? when, when you mentioned print on demand, I, I have actually got, I got like a little mug made of Newcastle and I got a, a Chelsea notebook as well, but they've been sitting there for like weeks. I so just have done nothing about it at all. Right. It's very slow going. <laughs> right. But, it, there is, I know that, um, I am trying to sort of head in that direction as well. So yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, Bailey says, oh yes. Travel journal is a great idea. Um, I like, and, uh, Sherry says, I like the map poster search best too. Um, so, and then, uh, Sherry again says, uh, you could totally sell framed canvas prints of those. Um, I also would, I would say it'd be worth even experimenting and putting them on a, on a throw pillow to go into yeah. a room. Yeah. Right. Or a blanket or a blanket. Yeah. And blankets have really good margins. So there's options there. 
we're not going to start there because people aren't searching for a blanket, but they're searching for the map poster or, um, or a print. And so that's what I would lead with. I'm always going to lead with the search and the demand there, which we've established that it's there. Um, and then from there, just build out that, um, and the cool thing about this is, is like, you're going to have people that are going to, there's a lot of word of mouth that will happen with this. So if you, if someone comes in, they're like, oh, that is so cool. Like, where did you get that done? I got it done by, you know, whatever the, you know, maps and memories and uh, they're on Etsy and uh, you know, it, it's, it's just really, really great. And I was had such a great experience and like, oh, cool. I got to look them up and then boom, there you go. Right. Yeah. That's going to happen. Your reviews I, in, on that, Chris, if you pull that back up again, I'll pull it up here. Um, the review yeah, rate, 20, like, 20% review rate. That's right? insane. <laughs> right. So, so they're for every hundred sales, they're getting almost 20 reviews, Yeah, which is insane. The more reviews, the more conversions usually go up. Um, so yeah, I think this is perfect for you. I don't know that we got to do anything else here than focus on this. Is there anything else that you would like to ask us or talk um, about before we let you go? No, I don't think so. I think like the the name. I think because I think over the last few weeks I've sort of sort of gone over like a little bit of a hurdle and stuff like that. And you've it's nice really because like you sort of confirm back to me that it is worth like sort of like carrying on as well. Yeah. Um so and also with the with the name of the shop and everything, that was that was something else that I was going to ask you. Um oh the only would you I know you don't like really sort of say about social media and stuff, but would you promote this on like the likes of Pinterest or anything like that or I think if there was one social media platform, it would be Pinterest uh, okay. because Pinterest is a search is a search based platform. So yeah. that would be one uh, Facebook. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if you're going to waste time, I don't, okay. Not waste time. If you're going to spend time. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Chris, right. If you're going to spend time putting stuff up on Facebook and, and constantly feeding the hamster wheel, right. It's like, cause that's what you're doing on social media. That's kind of like in a feed. Um, yeah. If you're going to spend the time there, I'd spend time creating more maps, right. More listings. And that's that was going to be what I said. I, you know, Katie, Pinterest is great, but that's not where we need to be spending our time. And I know one of the things that you said is a sticking point for you is knowing what to do on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. With the time that you have, that precious time that you have, we need to be creating the products that are in demand for this market. And if we don't have another product to create, then we need to go back to that list of like, most Googled cities, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because this search is not necessarily even starting with a map poster. It's probably starting with map of Perth, map of Liverpool, map of Boston. Yeah. And then they're going, oh, cool, poster. And they go back to Etsy search if they don't find the one that they want. And they type in poster or map poster of Baltimore, map poster of this thing, or map poster for wedding, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we can focus on creating the highest demand products, at least for right now, yes. until yeah. we start to see yes. that traction, that's a much better use of your time than anything yeah. that we could be doing on Pinterest or anywhere else in social media. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. I mean, because that, that little bit of traffic that might trickle in from Pinterest, like, but if you hit a product that's got demand and you're getting not even just traffic, but you're getting sales, it's going to outweigh what you're doing over there. Um, yeah. you know, Sherry, uh, did say, and I'll just throw it up here. It's super easy. Just install a Pinterest plugin and just pin the photos from your shop and then forget about it. That If you're doing that. Yeah. I mean, if you're just using the, you know, pin, you know, feature inside while you're creating the listing, go for it. Yeah. Like you're not, you're not leaving the platform to go over and create a graphic and upload it and create a board. Like if you're going to take the time, which it sounds like you've already done where you create the board and then you just pin it to the board. That's fine. Like, I don't have a problem with that. Um, because it's kind of just part of the listing process at that point. Yeah, it, it just blows my mind a bit because like when you go on and like sort of like say YouTube videos and what have you and you say about Pinterest and then they're saying about what's well, got to be optimized and that, but then you've got to go into Pinterest and then you've, it's got to be the right size and blah, blah, blah. And I know what you're saying. It's sort of, it is time. It's time probably that I haven't really got. Yes. Um, so yeah, totally get it. Yeah. yeah. If we take all that time that you would be spending on that, what you just said, not the click a button and pin it from Etsy, but all of the other things you're in Canva, you're creating a graphic, you're uploading, you're creating a board, adding your description, like all that stuff. If we took that and focused it on more research to see what products are in demand and then creating those products, sales are going to go like, right. and then once you start to get that flywheel, then, then we're good to go. We haven't even talked about email marketing, which that's a whole nother thing. So and I, I would would definitely, and, you know, and we're not going to, we're not going to get into that today <laughs> because I think you're we need like a whole, banner or a buzzer or yeah. like a, a fly in right? yeah. <laughs> email um, marketing. But I mean, that is definitely in your future. 
Um, I would be out of the gate. I would create a landing page that would say, join our VIP, um, you know, maps and memories club, uh, or whatever, <laughs> you know, and then from there, you're going to start building an email list. And even if it's slowly, um, but it's in place, um, I know Everbee email, you can do that. You can do that in other programs too, but Everbee email is the one we use. Um, but you just create that page by a domain name that would, you know, again, um, say the name VIP.com and then you would just share it. And then you start building that slowly, your opening message, you would just put it in there. Um, and then that way there, it's kind of passive where you're not doing it. You just set it up once that to me would be way worth more of your time than going over to Pinterest and doing all that right. other nonsense. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I would say let's, let's do that, but to not get distracted, I'd say 85% of your time needs to be on getting these products created, getting the listing created for the products that are in demand that are being searched for and starting with the ones that we found today. Okay. Sound good. It sounds amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So then <laughs> your homework is to do just that. And part of that homework is to stay focused and, uh, maybe, uh, spend a little bit less time on YouTube. Like, I know that like we're on YouTube and we want you to watch our videos, but maybe just maybe give yourself a little bit of a, of a time allotment. And then, you know, just if you're going to go on YouTube, the way I look at it is too, is like everyone wants a little bit of free time to be able to just kind of browse around. But if that thing that triggers like, you know, Oh, squirrel, you know, chase it, you know, if it does that and it takes you off of like, what is driving it, you have to ask yourself this thing over here that I just saw that caught my eye. Is it going to, in fact, benefit what I'm working on right now. And if the answer is no, then you shelf it. Right. Okay. You know, all right. So that's your homework. All we ask is that you come back and report to us on what thing or, you know, what, what you implemented, what has resulted from it. And then who knows, maybe we'll have you come back on when you're, you know, you hit your thousand sale, because I do believe that's in your future. And it probably could happen relatively quickly if we get on a product like we just discovered. Okay. Lovely. Sound good? Yeah, thanks so much. So that's a wrap for this Etsy shop audit. But if you want to watch more, well, you can find some more right here. And if you do, well, I'll see you there.